So if you're starting a new diet or say you've even been on a new diet like keto for a month, you might be wondering like, how is my cholesterol doing? How's my immune system? All, there's all these factors that we just can't really tell on a day-to-day -day basis other than just how we're feeling. So that is where blood work can really come in handy. And today we're giving you a whole view into our blood work and how we've been doing on the keto diet. Stick around because we're gonna be breaking everything down on what you need to know when you're starting a new diet. But first, we're bringing you videos on peak performance for mind and body in the modern world. Make sure you're subscribed and hit that little bell so you get notified every week when we drop a new video on Monday. So some in the biohacking in community might consider me a supplement junkie. When I was first getting into this whole thing, I got every vitamin under the sun and started taking them religiously and I was spending a ton of money on them. Here's the great news. You might not have to spend so much money on supplementing if you just go get your blood taken, see how your body is naturally producing vitamin D, how much B12 do you have, you might be over producing because you're over supplementing. So getting your blood work is a great way to just get a baseline for how your body is reacting or producing certain vitamins. In addition, there's also the diet aspect. If you're planning to get started on some type of new diet regime and you're planning to do it over a long period of time, you wanna get that baseline. You wanna find out where your markers are, especially in something like a high saturated fat diet like keto. You wanna know where you're starting and then how you're progressing over time. One of the biggest things we wished we had done before we started keto was just checking our blood because we don't have that baseline. So if you do a keto diet for a month, six months, and then you look at your blood and maybe your cholesterol is really high, you don't know if your cholesterol was high before the diet. You don't know if it's been the saturated fat or the bulletproof coffee that's been raising that, or if it's something that you're, you know, you previously had. Yeah. Learn from us, people. We made a couple mistakes this way. We thought we were only gonna do keto for like a month, and then here we are one year later. So if you're thinking about starting, just go make that appointment today. But regardless of if you're doing any extreme diet, just checking your blood levels to know what you should supplement and how to be the healthiest version of yourself, super important. So there's a lot of great options out there today. We live in an amazing age where you can get all this blood work done pretty easily. Unfortunately, to do a large panel like this, your doctor is probably not gonna pay for it, especially if you appear young and healthy. So if you're looking for a way to do this, there's a couple providers on the market. We used Wellness FX. There's a couple different packages you can get starting around $100. We paid for the performance package, which is just about $500. That gives you insights into a lot of information. So you only have to do this every year really to get a good baseline. And it really gives you lots of insight into your cardiovascular health, your fatty acids, your metabolic health, how your thyroid is doing, and everything from your liver health to your kidneys, how many electrolytes you have, your bone health, and a ton of other things related to the health of your white blood cells, red blood cells, and vitamin and mineral counts. Now, there are other providers on the market. Um, Inside Tracker is one we've heard a lot of good information about, we just haven't tried it, uh, but they all effectively do the same thing. They give you access to the data about your blood. And we'll link below if you want to check out one of these resources or listen to a couple of podcasts about why you would want to get your blood done. So Ben Greenfield has a great one um, and we'll link that below. Yeah. So we're going to go over our results and talk about some of the things and the ways we think about what we should do about these results. However, there are plenty of great resources out there that go in much greater detail into what you should be looking for in your results. All right. Shall we dive into our blood work? Let's do it. Let's do it. To the couch. Woo. Woo. So our blood work. Let's start with the easier one, shall we? Here you go. <laughs> my cardiovascular health looks very good. Uh, my basic lipid panel, my LDL, uh, pretty much where I want it. Um, I've gotten a couple blood tests since we did this and it fluctuates a little bit, but it's generally in a very healthy range. We'll talk more about uh, lipid panels uh, a little later. Uh, a lipid later. My inflammation marker was phenomenal. We've done a lot to help with inflammation. A keto diet helps with inflammation where it's low carb. We do- Fasting helps with inflammation. 
We do hot saunas and ice therapy. We do PEMF. We do a lot of things that impact inflammation. So to be at a 0.2, phenomenal. That's like the gold standard for where you want to be from an HSCRP test. Let's talk about omegas for a second. Yes. Because there's always this big omega debate. Um, you know, are you getting too much omega-6 from a lot of processed oils? Or are you getting, you know, a healthy ratio of three to six? And I think the gold standard would be like one to one ratio, ideally. We've heard some anecdotes that suggest maybe our ancestors had a one to one ratio, which is where you're getting the same amount of omega-3s as you are omega-6s. Omega-3s are anti-inflammatory and omega-6s are inflammatory. So you want a good balance there. Without omega-6s, your body can't create the inflammation it needs at the right times to help with healing, but you also want to be low on inflammation on a chronic basis. So you don't wanna have that high inflammation marker all the time. So mine's very good. At a 4.7 ratio, that means 4.7 omega-6s for every one omega-3, that's pretty good. The average American diet puts you more closer into the 20 to 40 to one range, which is just not natural and not good. Mm -hmm. I would love to get to one to one, but I am going to have to do things to make that happen. Uh, a lot of processed meats and carbohydrates uh, are very high in omega-6s. So in order to reduce your omega-6 levels, you have to eat a much more plant-based diet, more fish, more fish oil, which I do for the most part, but man, you have to get strict to get that level mm -hmm. low. So my white blood cell counts came back pretty low, but this is something that can fluctuate a lot and my immune system has been phenomenal. After almost a year, I only got sick once and I managed to fight off the cold very quickly. So I used to get sick every few months. So I'm not really worried about my immune system. This could have just been that particular day. My white blood cell count was down. Um, it's not really something to be concerned about. If you get some of these red results, that's where you can go back and test that specific result again and look for the trend lines. Look if that was a fluke uh, because sometimes things can just be off on the given day. Mm -hmm. Besides that, my scores were pretty great across the board. I want to improve my vitamin D levels a bit. Uh, so I want mine relatively normal to a little bit high. So I'm supplementing, but one thing we found from some research is that supplementation of vitamin D doesn't really get activated unless you're also getting sunlight. So think of it as a way of increasing the value of the sunlight you're getting rather than a replacement for sunlight. Mm -hmm. All right, hand it over. Oh God, every time I look at these lipids, I'm like, what? So uh, for context, I did not get my blood taken before. I'm sorry guys, I'm deathly afraid of needles. It took like, you know, four nurses to sedate me during this round, but I'm really glad I got these and I'm going to be getting my blood work done again in a couple of weeks and I'll report back on how I'm doing. But basically, the bottom line is my LDL is through the roof. So hereditarily on both my mom and my dad's side, high cholesterol runs in the family. Um, so that being said, I'm not sure if my high cholesterol levels are completely hereditary or a result of my diet. It's gonna take further testing and further experimenting diet-wise to see what those contributing factors are. But I'll tell you for certain, I'm not going on a statin. So a lot of people get their cholesterol numbers back and if they're through the roof, it's kind of a little bit of a panic attack. But there's a huge difference between LDL and HDL and Jasper's gonna break down the science. So yeah, there's a lot of different variables that go into understanding your cholesterol. And one high, just like cholesterol total number, more and more people agree that doesn't matter. The real question is how much LDL, low density lipoprotein do you have compared to your HDL? and also how do triglycerides play into this. So we'll, we'll take a quick look at this. If you wanna understand the science better, I highly recommend checking out this video by Dave Feldman. He has done a ton of research and information to this. He's on some podcasts. You can hear debates from both sides uh, where someone like Peter Atia is strongly against having high LDL, whereas Dave Feldman may think it's actually not a problem assuming other factors. At the very basics, we've recognized that high LDL in the presence of inflammation is linked to cardiovascular risk and the development of atherosclerosis. That's basically plaque building up in the arteries. 
Now what they find is that that plaque is made up of a lot of LDL. So the natural conclusion was, oh, LDL is causing it. But it's more like the firefighters at the fire than it is the fire itself. Because your body produces 75% of its own cholesterol. Only 25% is actually through your diet. And your body will ramp up or decrease production of cholesterol based on how much cholesterol you're getting in your diet. So your diet can dramatically spike the amount of cholesterol in your body, but it's still a vital nutrient that your body needs. LDL cholesterol, because it's been linked to atherosclerosis, has been kind of labeled the bad cholesterol where HDL has been labeled the good cholesterol because it actually goes around and cleans up excess cholesterol in your system. So LDL delivers the cholesterol, HDL goes around and cleans it up. And the other thing is how many triglycerides you have, which is actually what's being delivered. So if you can keep your, your triglycerides low, your HDL high, and your LDL is still high, and you have low inflammation, that is a recipe that doesn't result in atherosclerosis, at least from what studies are showing. So the debate is raging right now in terms of high cholesterol versus low cholesterol, and people on both sides of the fence are people we respect and we listen to. And there are even some high saturated fat foods that can even contribute to lowering your LDL levels. So really, you know, there is so much information out there to kind of piece together, and we're really starting to delve into that. now. That being said, one of my goals is to lower my LDL cholesterol levels. One of the best things you get from seeing these types of results is that you can understand what to focus on. So now that we know Katie's LDL is a concern, we can start to look for supplements and diet changes and different things that will make a big impact on that and start to see if those are actually changing the results by retesting. But I'm not giving up blue, bulletproof coffee. <laughs> That's gonna be a challenge because technically a bulletproof coffee is over 100% of your daily cholesterol. So we're gonna put the cholesterol to the test to see if actually dietary cholesterol is the cause of higher LDL. Mm -hmm. So LDL, in a nutshell, in a wall nutshell, was uh, essentially what I have to work on the most, believe it or not, and this was very much a surprise to me, the rest of my panel looks pretty good. All of my hormones, my thyroid, and even my iron levels, which I suffered so much as a kid from low iron and being cold all the time. Not anymore. I don't even supplement iron. So um, just, you know, a couple of things that now I realize like I'm actually doing really well on. I don't need to take a vit vitamin B12 supplement anymore. Really don't need to take any more vitamin D and my calcium levels are great. So this is all very reassuring to get some good news out of, you know, maybe all those things I've stocked up in my supplement counter, I don't need to take anymore because my body's already naturally producing them. So again, some really insightful stuff we've gotten from this blood work and, I, and I'll be working with my doctor in the next few weeks on ways to optimize my health across the board. So how am I gonna reduce my LDL levels? I've done a little bit of research and I have a couple of things that I'm going to test out. These include lowering my caffeine intake, which is going to be extremely difficult. We've already got 50-50 decaf. We're working our way down. I'm gonna be supplementing with some fermented garlic. I'm also gonna be incorporating more strength training into my routine. One thing interesting is the thought around strength training helping reduce LDL is that the pieces, uh, the LDLs are built up of proteins that your body can actually use to build muscle. So if you're building muscle, you can actually use up some of that extra LDL reducing in your system. So over the next uh, few weeks, I'm gonna go back, get my blood work taken again talk to my doctor and I will be bringing you the results back and let you know if any of these things or all of them have maybe worked. But I am not changing my diet. So I wanna kinda of start with a baseline of just adding some supplements, seeing if that lowers my LDL while keeping my saturated fat intake the same. So I'm not giving up Bulletproof coffee just yet. <laughs> and one great thing is that now that you've got this whole blood panel available to you, that is enough information to take to your doctor. Katie can take her LDL panel to her doctor and say, look, can we retest my lipids? And that will be covered by insurance because now she has a medical issue. So hopefully this was helpful getting you started. If you're extremely fearful about getting your blood taken, trust me, it's not as bad as it seems. And once you get the results, it is immensely 
useful information. And so I cannot stress it high enough, especially when you're thinking about investing in a lot of supplements and or starting a brand new diet get a baseline it is worth it so next week we are going to be diving into our face health we actually went down to la and got facial scams that revealed our true age of our skin so you won't want to miss that and we'll be giving you all of the tips and tricks we use to keep our skin youthful so stick around make sure to hit that subscribe button don't forget to click that little bell so you get notified every week when we drop a new video on Monday mornings. And we're just getting started here, so please leave us a comment. Let us know what you want to see in future episodes, and then we will catch you on the next one.